Hello, Bob Gustin again here. We've talked we've talked about steel rules, we've talked about tape measures, we talked about squares, we've talked about and learned how to read uh, vernier caliper. Today we're gonna do micrometers. We're talk talk about the principles of how a micrometer works, the parts of a micrometer, care and maintenance of a mic, and from that point that's where we'll stop. Now, first of all, this is a set of it goes from aught to four. This would be an aught to one. This is what we call this in industry. This is a one to two, two to three, three to four. Micrometers, English micrometers, are going to measure in one inch increments. The readings will all be the same. The only thing changes is the size of this black piece here called the frame. I'm going to pick right now on the aught to one micrometer. I'll get it out. They all look the same shape, same style. This is the standard in industry for precision measuring. Again, this is a precision measuring tool. How does this work? Before we get to describing the parts of the mic, let's figure out how this thing works. This is a giant bolt and nut. Inside this piece I have in my right hand, this is going to be the bolt. Inside here is a fine thread, a 40 pitch thread. The receiving end, the nut, is in here. This is a 40 pitch thread. The threads make this infinitely adjustable over its range of travel. That's what makes a micrometer so accurate, way more accurate than a, a caliper. Again, you clean it up, lightly oiled. If you get water on these things, you want to keep make sure that you dry them off. In machining, you're going to be working around coolants that have water in it. And you don't, and again, water and steel do not mix well together. The parts of a mic. The part that you see here that I'm turning, this is called the barrel or the thimble. It'll have multiple names. The barrel and the thimble is the two most I've heard. The stationary part, I'm going to turn it around here, that's got numbers. This is called the sleeve. The part that's sticking out on this end, this is called the spindle. This piece down here, this is called the anvil. This is the stationary piece. It does not move. Then we have the frame. This is the black colored thing I'm holding my hand. So those are the discrete parts of a micrometer. Again, cleanliness. This is precision tools. This is not a C-clamp with numbers on it. If, again, this is your micrometer, if you choose to use your micrometer like a C-clamp, well, that's your micrometer, not mine. But these are high-precision tools. This would be a common tool, whether you're an automotive, diesel, automotive tech, a diesel tech, your industrial technologies, obviously you're a machining major, welding major, you're going to be using this. And especially if you're a machining major, I guarantee you 100% you'll be using one of these. Now to clean this off, and the only place we can get by with this is on an Octa one but you do not want to have dirt between the end face of this spindle, the part that rotates, and the anvil. Dirt has thickness. How thick is it? I don't know. Henceforth, that's a guess, so we need to clean it off. Now the easiest way to do it on this is to take a piece of paper, Screw it down until you just feel some drag and pull the paper out. And you'll notice here, if you can see it in the camera, there's some black junk that showed up. Well, that's grit and garbage on there. Again, if we were to do any form of precision measurement, we're measuring all this junk right along with what I have. How thick is it? I don't know, but we, we don't want to take that chance when you're doing precision measurements. You're fitting a bearing on a shaft or a pump or something. You're talking about three, four place decimals, tenths of a thousandths of an inch. I guarantee you that garbage there is well over a tenth of a thousand thick. Now that we have this thing clean, we need to calibrate it. What does that mean? That means on an octa one mic, and this is the only place you can do this on, when I bring this together, my line should all line up. My zero line here on the barrel should line up with this long line on the sleeve. If it does, we're at zero reading. 
And yes, it does. It matches up nicely. Now, if you'll notice here in a previous video on calipers, I talked about in I talked about Amarillo gear and their gauge calibration. If you can see this, you'll notice there's this ring around here with writing. This is the come. This is actually gauge calibrated by Amarillo Gear to their standard. They set this to the national standards. Henceforth, and to have this to work at Amarillo Gear, you have to have your tools calibrated. Now they do that for you free, but this is a nice thing to know that my tools are all in calibration and reading right. I can give you a little war story on this while I'm getting out the standards here. I had a former student who owned a shop. And one day he had to leave rather hurriedly from class. And I never understood why until he came back and he explained to me. They, had, they did a high comp pressure compressor for the gas industry. And when they got the part to the job site way out in the middle of nowhere in Kansas, it didn't fit. Well, when they got the check and what had happened was the machinist that made the part had not calibrated his micrometer. And the part was about three thousandths of an inch undersized. So that was kind of... A bad thing but it's a good lesson to learn this is important we're going to go to the little bit bigger cap bigger micrometer again I'm going to clean this with paper I didn't mention it before but do not use any form of abrasive cloth do not use scotch bright a file anything that can cut or abrade you do not want it these are very very precision machine and if you were to use emery cloth on that, you just ruin your micrometer. So clean with a piece of paper, not with a piece of scotch brite, not with some old shop cloth that you've just got done polishing the shaft with, you know, because that's going to really help you out. Now, the part I have in my left hand is what's known as a standard. In your mic sets, as you come into machining, you're going to buy a bigger mic set, and you will have a standard in your mic set. This is to calibrate your mics. Don't throw it away. It's not a mistake. It's a, it's a valuable thing to have. And what we're going to do is the same thing we did with the Otto 1. Now remember, micrometers are always calibrated on the zero in the front. You can check back here, but your zero measurement is all the way down. So you want to calibrate them to the front. Now I'm going to have to turn this around for clarity. I'm going to crank this up. I've cleaned it. I'm going to bring this down. I need to clean this off. I'm being lazy here this morning. I'm going to bring this together on the standard. And I'm going to look at it from my side. Then I'm going to turn it around to your side. And you're going to see that the zero lines up with the line on the, the, line on the barrel. The zero on the barrel lines up with this line on the sleeve. And I'm in calibration. People, check your measuring tools. You know, you you need to learn to check them. The care and maintenance of your, your measuring tools is, is vital. You don't want to be that guy that didn't calibrate his micrometer. Because I don't know how it worked. If Michael never told me what happened, but I don't know how it worked out for the gentleman. But I can't imagine it was good. Anyway, well this concludes this video on calibrating micrometers.